What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, October 19th. Uh, before we jump into the alerts for the week, just wanted to point out a couple new things in the members area. When you first log in, you're going to see a couple things. One, strategy watch list. We have updated this with some new symbols. We've removed some symbols. Uh, as symbols come in and out of favor, some stocks go out of business, get bought, merged. Uh, other liquidity events come into the markets. This will be updated from time to time. And just to let you know, we just recently updated that. So you can click on the strategy watch list for an updated version there. And then secondly, we sent out a, an email about this, but also the earnings watch list. We are getting ready to be in the thick of earnings season. And so this is something that's going to be continually automatically updated for you to give you the upcoming earning dates of the uh, about 170 some stocks uh, of the most liquid stocks that we would consider for earnings related trades. And all those strategies are taught in our earnings course called How to Trade Options on Earnings for Quick Profits that you'll have here. So let's, uh, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 15th. The first trade that we made was in the ES. So we were simply rolling this trade down. We are at over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. So what we like to do is we like to roll those strikes closer to the current price, pick up some credit for doing so. And in this case, we just we stayed in November and uh, because there's there's decent time left, some of the trades we had already rolled out to December, so just kind of spread that risk around uh, via the different time frames until expiration. So if we take a look at that, here is the uh, analyze tab. You can see price is pretty close to where we rolled it from. So if we get a little bit more downside, that would benefit this. And this is our our long put vertical, which we originally uh, implemented for that short delta in our portfolio. Got to keep that short bias anytime you're selling premium to protect yourself from vicious downside moves like we've seen recently. And that's, uh, that's benefited us greatly for having that short delta on. Now, uh, as far as where we stand with our short delta to theta ratio, we always talk about we like to be in that one to one to five to one. So for every dollar of theta, we like to have a a dollar of short delta up to a maximum of negative five delta per per one. So one to one to five to one is the kind of the ratio we like to play in. And uh, right now we're about one to one. So we're on the lower end of that range. So if we had a massive move down, it's uh, not going to help us as much. But of course, if this market turns around and starts going higher, uh, we're, we're going to be a, in a good position for that as well. So I really like having this position after the big down move, it sucks away a lot of our short delta, uh, and that's that's just how the game goes. And so we're going to continue to manage that as needed. If we do see some more upside in the market and we want to reposition for a little bit more short delta, we might do that. We're automatically going to get more short delta as the, as the price moves up due to the range-bound trades that we like to trade as part of our core strategy. But, uh, but we'll just see what happens. So right now we're about one-to-one. -one. Now the long put... Vertical is also separate from our ES iron condor trade. So we've got two sets of short call verticals that were originally part of our iron condor trade. And we'll go over those in just a second here because I know we've got some trades that happened uh, this week in, in that piece as well. The, uh, the next trade was an opening adjusting trade in IWM. So we, did, we just added an iron condor in IWM, IV percentile, nice and high at 97 and so we added that on. So we still have a short put vertical on as well from, a, from an iron condor. Let's take a look at that. And this is the iron condor we just put on. So we've got a little bit of profit in there at this point. Not enough to do anything with yet. And then if we look at just the short put vertical, which we still have on, you can see it's, it's busted way out of range with this down move. But we're holding it to kind of help balance out our portfolio. If it moves back up, great. We'll benefit on that piece. If not, we'll probably close this as we get closer to expiration or potentially roll it to help balance our portfolio depending on where everything is at. So stay tuned for that. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. 
So same kind of situation. In this case, this was our last trade that we had left in October with just four days to expiration. Those uh, October options expire today, Friday. And so we just simply rolled down our long put vertical. Uh, excuse me, we just rolled it out in time. So we rolled it from October to November, stayed in the exact same strikes. So we're at the 232.20. And we just picked up some credit for doing so and continue to keep that as short delta in our portfolio. And Apple's been really strong until this week, and we finally got some down movement to help benefit that piece. But here you can see where price is, still well within our range, pretty close to where we put it on. And uh, if we get some more downside in Apple, that'll benefit that trade. Next one was a closing adjusting trade in forward slash CL. So we closed out one of our short strangles, booked around 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And at, the, and at that point, we were still holding our, uh, our adjusted strangle, which was at the 68 and a half strike for both the puts and calls. Uh, so we still had that on and, and, and we exited that later here in the week. So once we get to that alert, I will go to the platform to show what we've got there. And then um, next trade was a closing trade in EWZ. So we had a short strangle on here, had this on for just 13 days, booked a profit over 40% of max profit in just 13 days. And, and remember, I've, I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, but even before the market volatility that we've seen, the implied volatility in EWZ was extremely high due to the current presidential elections that are going on in Brazil. And uh, it really pumped up the option premium, which was a great opportunity to be selling premium. Fear is nearly always overstated, and that was the case here. So we booked a nice profit on that one. Next trade was a closing trade in Costco. So we had an iron condor on in Costco, uh, had that on for just 11 days and booked a 35% of max profit in just 11 days. And that's how quickly this implied volatility can contract. This was actually a, a post earnings iron condor that we did in Costco. So they had earnings, but, in, but implied volatility stayed bid, stayed really high. And uh, so we jumped in there and sold some premium and uh, benefited well. So good trade in Costco. Next trade was a closing trade in EWW. This was an, another kind of along the same lines, booked over 30% of max profit in just six days. And we put on a short strangle in EWW when the implied volatility got super high, contracted and, and booked a nice profit really quickly in EWW. Next trade was a closing trade. And so this is where we closed out of our uh, short strangle in oil in CL. So this is one that we've had on for a few months and we just stayed mechanical. We, we sold some premium, it kind of moved to one end of our range. We might add a little piece to it and we continue to roll and stay mechanical and do what was needed. And, 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 when we, and so this was the close of the overall trade that we've been in for a few months. So let me go to the closing trades if you didn't see this. This was our biggest single winner that we've seen in our alerts portfolio uh, ever <laughs> uh, since, we, since we started posting our alerts. So, we booked over $3,400 just on this one trade. You can see we, we started this trade back in at the end of May, so several months in the trade, but just continued to stay mechanical, and uh, we were never really down on the trade. Uh, implied volatility is just nice, so we kept kind of adding to it and taking it off, adding to it, taking it off, and, uh, and as you can see, booked a really nice profit there. So great trade in oil, and I've, I've talked about this before, but. Oil is one of my favorite vehicles just because you get so much credit uh, for a fairly low uh, buying capital requirement. So love trading oil. And so we, we were out of that at this point. And then the next trade uh, was EWZ. So implied volatility staying nice and high. So we entered a new uh, short strangle in EWZ. And so we've still got that on. If we take a look at EWZ here, you can see still pretty centered well within our range and we'll still continue to to uh, to monitor that one as needed but nothing to do at this point and that's in November which at this point now has 28 days to expiration so remember once we get under 21 days uh, we'll be looking to roll or do something or close that one out so we'll see what happens if we get a quick uh, contraction in implied volatility well, you know who knows we may book this winter if things go like they have been and uh, if not, we'll just continue to manage it as needed. Next trade was a closing trade in XRT. So again, another quick winner. We were only in this one for eight days, 
booked over uh, right around 30% of max profit in just eight days in XRT. XRT is the retail ETF. So if you take a look here, I don't know if I could type this in here, XRT. Uh, you can see implied volatility. We put it on when implied volatility spiked up to this area and then had a quick contraction and took that off for a nice winner. So uh, we're at an XRT at this point. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in EEM. So we already had an adjusted strangle in place. Price moved down and kind of uh, to, the, to the very lower end of the range in our adjusted strangle. And so we hadn't adjusted that one again yet. But in this case, we just added on another centered strangle. In this case, we did it out in December with 64 days to expiration, which is just outside of our wheelhouse. We tend to stay within that 30 to 60 days. But in this case, November only had 29 days, so less than 30. And December had 64, a little bit over 60. So we opted for the further dated options, giving us a little bit more time on this one. And so if we take a look at EEM, we've still got both of these pieces in place. Here is our November one, which is an adjusted strangle, uh, currently a, basically a straddle at the 42 strike. And you can see prices hanging out down here in the lower range. If, uh, if we look at just the calls, uh, you can see, you know, we've still got a tiny bit of profit left in those calls. So if price moves much lower at all, we're going to we're going to adjust that. But you know, if it moves back up, we'll just continue to. We may book a profit if it moves up. So we'll just see what happens. I'm not ready to roll those calls down yet at this point. And then the piece from the alert that I just added was this uh, another strangle. You can see it's dead centered, not much profit or loss at all. Uh, still very centered from right where we put it on. So we'll continue to watch that as well. Next trade was an opening trade in forward slash 6B. So I noted here that 6B just was just recently added to the navigation trading watch list. And, uh, and this is the British, uh, British pound future. So we used options on that futures contract and sold some premium here. And the I noted that uh, the IV percentile is currently at 86 and we use the corresponding ETF, which is FXB. So if we take a look at FXB, uh, that's the because the remember the implied volatility indicator doesn't isn't very accurate on some of these futures contracts. So you've got to use the corresponding ETF to get an accurate reading. And in this case, it was nice and high. So we put on that short strangle in forward slash 6B. And you can see we've got a little bit of profit here up about 87 bucks. Uh, but nothing, not enough to take off yet. We're looking for between 30 and 50% of that max profit before we close that one out. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in forward slash ES. So this is one of our short call verticals. It was originally part of our iron condor trade. Kind of same situation as the long put vertical where we're up over 50% of max profit. So that profit line started to really flatten out on us. So we wanted to roll those strikes closer. And in this case, uh, we rolled this out from November to December and then adjusted our strikes down to, uh, to pick up a nice credit here. So if we take a look at ES again, we, uh, we already looked at the long put vertical here. So let's reset these so I can check on the correct boxes and, uh, and then we'll take a look. So we'll uncheck that and then we will take a look at this one here. And so you can see price has moved down some since then. So we're, we're up uh, several hundred dollars on that piece. And then here is the other one. So very similar trades, both of them out in December. And this one is pretty close to where we put it on. So just to, again, holding those for that short delta, that short bias in our portfolio. And, uh, and we'll continue to manage those as needed. Next trade and the last trade was we got back into oil. So applied volatility stayed nice and high. IV percentile was at 62 and IV rank was at 70. And we we're using USO, the corresponding ETF, to look at that. Now, usually the IV percentile most of the time is higher than the IV rank. So in this case, I, I noted what the IV rank was as well. Uh, you know, sometimes you just you get in periods where the IV rank, you know, based on the calculation of that implied volatility uh uh, uh, indicator, you know, they just have a little bit different calculation. That's why we move. That's why we use both, because um, we want to. We want to see uh, if either one is over fifty. That to us, that represents 
good opportunity to enter trade. So let's take a look at USO and you can see, you know, it's at 66 on the percentile now, 73 on the rank. So great time to be selling premium. So we entered a new short strangle in oil and you can see it's right where we put it on. Applied volatility has actually gone up a little bit since we put it on. So you can see we're slightly down on the trade, but, but dead centered in the middle of our range. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. I mentioned these ones, gold. Gold, we have this short strangle on here and it seems like gold's been hanging out in the upper end of its range for quite a, quite a while now, but we are, so we're down on the trade, but still well within our range. No need to adjust yet. We are in the December options, which still have 39 days to expiration. So a lot could happen in the next 39 days. So if we get a, if price continues higher, then we'll just roll our puts up, collect some more credit, and continue to manage that as needed. Obviously, if price moves down back into our into the center of our range, we'll have the opportunity to book a profit. Uh, so, and, and that would probably happen next week. If, if price moved down, we'd have a chance to book this one next week, but we'll see what happens. Natty Gas has been a little bit of a wild ride for us, but we've got two pieces to this trade on. One is this adjusted strangle where you can see prices hanging out up here. So it could use a little bit of downside movement to benefit that piece. And then we've got this other unadjusted strangle where price is pretty centered here and just waiting for some implied volatility contraction to benefit that. If we take a look at the implied volatility, we'll use UNG, which is the corresponding ETF. You can see this implied volatility has just been grinding higher uh, and it's, it's higher than when we put it on. So we haven't gotten a lot of that theta decay for just being uh, being in the trade for the period of time we have. Uh, but eventually this will contract and assuming price stays in a decent range for us, hopefully we get out of this one nicely. Uh, next trade, wheat. We've been in this one for quite some time. Uh, continuing to manage. I uh, was actually looking for a closing. Uh, we, we had a little over $300 at one point, according to uh, to looking at this. I tried to get filled. We weren't getting filled, and it's come down a little bit since then, but we'll continue to manage this. The other thing we, we will, you know, if it moves a little bit lower, potentially we might add another centered iron condor around that to collect more credit and extend duration on that trade. Apple, uh, I already mentioned that. We've got the long put vertical, so looking for some downside to benefit that. Uh, DIA, we've got two short call verticals, one in November, one in December. This is our November position. And so just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. And then also the one that's out in December where we've, we've got a profit there as well, but could use a little bit more downside before we do anything on that. And again, these were part of an iron condor. We're just holding on to and, and continuing to roll and extend duration to keep that short delta in our overall portfolio. EEM, I already mentioned that one, EWZ I mentioned, FXI. So we've got two butterfly spreads on in FXI. Uh, this is the call butterfly and you can see price had moved down slightly outside of the range here. And we added a, so we're just gonna hold that one for now. Both of these are in November. So we added a put butterfly and you can see this one's pretty centered. We're up some money on this one, not enough to take off yet. We like to get about 20 to 25% profit on this and we've got 720 in this so you know 140 150 bucks is what we're looking for before we would book a profit in that one IWM uh, we've got the uh, short put vertical I already went over that one so could use some upside on that and we've got the other full iron condor as well uh, kind of similar story with IYR we've got this uh, short put vertical because price had come down through our break even and so we took off the untested side. And so we're just looking for a little bit of upside movement in IYR to benefit that piece. And then we've also got another full iron condor on here where you can see we're pretty centered. We've got some profit in that, but not enough to take off yet. QQQ, we've got uh, two sets of short call verticals and uh, just waiting for uh, this one. In fact, it's over 50% of max profit. But I just, I just wanted to give it until next week instead of doing some more. We did a lot of rolling the last couple of weeks, so just trying to spread that out. Uh, still got plenty of profit in there if we do continue down. Uh, but we will look to potentially roll this out to December, roll these strikes closer to price, collect another credit, 
and continue to play that game and keep it for short delta. And then same thing with this one here. We don't have quite as much profit here, but just holding on to this for that short delta. And if it continues too much lower, we'll do the same thing with, uh, with rolling and, and continuing to extend duration on that one. Restoration hardware, one that we don't trade very often, but uh, it's set up nicely for what we were trying to do. And this was simply, we got to a point where we were under that one-to-one -one short delta to theta ratio. And so we wanted to add some more short delta on. And in this case, RH, you know, it came up and, uh, you know, it, it had had this big move down and then bounced up because they announced a stock buyback. And we're looking to the, for the stock to roll back over. Uh, it went up a little bit higher after, after we put that on, but it's starting to look like it's rolling over now. So we'll continue to see what happens. But again, we just put that on as a potential option for some additional short delta. SMH. This one, uh, we've got a short strangle on here that has been adjusted. Price is moving down here out of our range. But remember, we don't really pay attention to the break-evens after we've made an adjustment. The way we like to look at this is if we just look at the untested side, you can see we've still got a little bit of profit left in that one. Uh, but if price moves much lower here, we will roll those calls down, collect some more credit, and then potentially roll out to December if we need to. Uh, to extend duration on this one. TLT, the bonds, uh, just we need a little bit of up movement in TLT and we could book a profit there. If not, we may look to add to this one and add on another centered iron condor, probably out in December if we, if we were looking to add that next week. And VXX, this is our short call vertical that we added after applied volatility spiked up. Now implied volatility has gone higher since we put this on, so that's why the price has, has moved out of our range. If we get a, another explosion in implied volatility, we would probably add to this. But at, at, at this point, we're just waiting to see if implied volatility continues to contract. And if it does, price will move back into our range. So, uh, so we'll just see what happens. And then XLK, another short bias position here. Uh, we've got a decent amount of profit here. We're just holding on to this and we'll either roll or close this one out depending on, on what happens there. So that's all the alerts and those are all the positions. Hope that was helpful. Everybody have a great weekend and look forward to another great week of trading next week. Talk to you soon.